Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to take a look at a ring of charge and we're trying to find the potential, the voltage right here on a line at the distance away from the center of the, of the circle, the center of the charged ring. Notice that this would be the line perpendicular to that ring and what is the potential at that point right there. Now the nice thing about finding the potential is that direction doesn't matter only the distance matters. So the only thing here is that if we take a small little segment right here, we call that a dq, we want to find the potential over here that will therefore be a dv and then using the equation that the voltage is kq over r, in this case the dv caused by the small little segment right there is going to be k times dq divided by the distance here and the distance is then defined by the Pythagorean theorem which is going to be the square root of r squared plus x squared. Now notice that the denominator is constant. r is constant, the radius of the, the circle is constant, and x, the distance away from the center, is constant. So the only thing that's variable is dq. Now dq is going to be equal to the linear charge density times the segment ds, and ds is defined as r d theta. So we can then rewrite dv as, well, I'll do it over here, so it would be k times the linear charge density, times the radius, times d theta, all divided by the square root of r squared plus x squared. So that means that now we find the voltage at that point. The voltage is going to be equal to the integral of all the dv's, and that's going to be equal to, taking all the constants out, we have k times lambda times r divided by uh, the square root of r squared plus x squared times the integral of d theta and d theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi because we're going to integrate all the way around the ring. Of course, and this becomes equal to k times lambda times r divided by the square root of r squared plus x squared and then multiply that times theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Of course, the integral of d theta is theta. When you plug in the lower limit, you get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, you get 2 pi. So this becomes equal to 2 pi r, I'm going to write as 2 pi r, times lambda times k, all divided by the square root of r squared plus x squared. Now, we have a linear charge density lambda, and the distance all the way around is 2 pi r. So if we multiply the length of the path all the way around the circle, all the way around the ring, which is 2 pi r, times the linear charge density, this right here will equal the total charge on the ring. So this could also be written as the total charge on the ring times k divided by the square root of r squared plus x squared. And then maybe, why don't we just turn this around and write this as k times q because now it looks more like this format right here. k times q divided by the distance which is the potential that we get. I say, well wait a minute, why do we get the exact same result? Well it turns out we can take the whole ring here and say what's the total charge on the ring and the total charge would be q where q is equal to lambda times 2 pi r Right, that's the circumference of circles. That's the total charge on the ring, and all the charge is the exact same distance away from this point right here. So without even going to this process, we could simply use this equation right here, and we can say that the voltage is equal to K times the total charge divided by the distance of any part of the ring from the point right there, which is the square root of, uh, let's see, get that straight, R squared plus X squared. And so notice just doing the simple way gets you the exact same result. And that is how it's done.